Hey guys, so today I'm going to be recreating some more Mr. Who's the Boss editing assets in DaVinci Resolve. So you guys loved my previous video on this exact topic, so I'm going to be doing it again. So let's do this. Now, some of you were asking, can you recreate the timeline thingy? And yes, I'm going to recreate that in this video. And the other graphic that I'm going to recreate later in this video is going to be this graphic right here, where basically there's this entire checklist and, and it's a versus thing, and that's what I'm going to be doing next. So this countdown actually looks like it's something that's pretty easy to do. All that happens is, oh, it's a number, and then it's in a circle, and then there's this white line that rotates around the entire circle, and then you can see here it just resets for every single Easter egg that the guy talks about. So let's jump into the thing here's up. So I'm currently in DaVinci Resolve and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to effects and then drag down a fusion composition which is basically what I'm going to be recreating the timer inside. So the first thing that you're going to want to do with this fusion composition is you're going to want to make it as long as you want. So if this is the start of what you're reviewing, so if this is the start of the easter egg and then this is where you stop explaining the easter egg, this is what you can, this is going to be how long the timer is going to go for. And let's say it's going to go for 30 seconds. So now I'm going to select the fusion composition, jump into the fusion page right here and this is when we're gonna start creating so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag down a background node connect it to the media out and obviously make it transparent so now the fusion composition is transparent and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick this fusion composition in front of the color bar so that it's easier to see obviously this fusion composition is now transparent jump back to the fusion page and next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag down another background node and then I'm going to change the type to a gradient. Now you can tell by this timer here that the gradient actually goes not from left to right, but it's from top to bottom. So what you're going to want to do is grab the dark, put it in the bottom, and then grab this part, and just drag this to the top. And now you can see that there's a gradient. And now I'm going to select the color. So pick screen color, and then I'm just going to select the bottom of the gradient. And then pick screen color, and then just the top blue. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an ellipse mask, which is just a circle mask, and then connect it to the background. And now you can see that uh, we have our little baseline shape here. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to grab the points of the gradient and just put them on the top and bottom of the circle just like this, just so that it's more even. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to recreate the text. Now if you've seen my previous video, you may have seen that the font that they use is actually Proxima Nova Extra Bold. So you can see that there's a 39. I'm just going to type 39 and then make it the font they use. So it's Proxima Nova Extra Bold. And then I'm just going to size it up like that. So I actually did a little bit of research and the guy that made that font also has a italic version but in my previous video I actually didn't use the italic version so I'm just using this version but you can try and find the italic version if you want I'm just gonna do the same that I did before go to transform shear and then change the X value to negative 0.12 which is about the same as in the video and yeah you can see we have our baseline graphics here so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna recreate the shadow that they have here because you can see that there's a slight bit of a shadow underneath the text what I didn't notice in my previous video is that there's actually a white shadow above the text so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to select the text node, go to shading. I'm going to select the second element, and then I'm going to call it black shadow. I'm going to enable that, and I'm just going to change the color from red to black. I'm going to change the appearance from this outline to the text fill, and then I'm going to move the offset down. And now you can see there's a little bit of that uh, shadow there. That's a little bit too much shadow don't you think? So I'm going to turn up the softness a bit more. I'm going to turn the alpha down. And then what I did was I basically just dialed in the settings to how I like them. And then to add the second shadow, you just go to element three and I'm going to rename it to white highlight. Enable that. Set the appearance to solid like that. Change the color to like a light gray. And then what I did was I basically just dialed in the settings to how I like them. And now you can see I have my wonderful shadows here, which basically makes it look like it's 3D. And this dark shadow on one side and the light highlight on the other side is the same technique as one of MKBHD's intros. And this actually gives it a little bit of that popping out a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the gradient in the text. So you may notice that there's a little bit of a gradient in the text. It's a little slight in the top and dark at the bottom. And to do that, I'm going to select the first element, change the type from solid to gradient. And then by default, it's already light at the top and dark at the bottom, but it's a little bit too dark. So I'm going to change the color by clicking this and then pick screen color. And then you just pick the uh, bottom of this text here. And then boom, I've basically recreated the number part. But what about this white part here that goes around the entire thing? Well, to recreate that, it's actually also pretty simple. I'm going to move the media out this way. A little bit, drag down a background node like that, change the type from a solid color to a gradient, and have it go from top to bottom just like that. And then I'm just gonna match the color, so I pick screen color, pick the top, and then pick screen color, and then I select the bottom of it, which looks like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this ellipse node, and then I'm just gonna simply just copy and paste it, connect it to the background node, uncheck solid, and then I'm just gonna expand this border width here, so maybe around this much. 
I'm gonna change the width and height value so that this line ends at the side of it and this side ends at around here. And then to get this thing moving, you're gonna wanna play with the position and the length. So the length is how long this line is. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna change the angle to 90 degrees and then I'm just gonna animate the length so that it's zero by the beginning and then it's at one by the end. And now you can see that it animates in like that. Now, one small little detail is that this actually animates this way and this actually goes the other way. So the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this away, drag down a transform node, and then I'm just going to hit this flip button. So now it's flipped and it animates the other way. Now there are a couple more small details. So you can see in the original there's actually shadow, so I'm just going to add shadow. Just like that. Change the offset a little bit so it's in the bottom corner. Add the softness. And then just change the settings to how you like them. And now you have recreated the timer animation. So the next thing that I'm going to be recreating is Beyond. this graphic that he made. Beyond. So you can see, I'm going to try and recreate this. So you can see that there's multiple images that's going on here. You can also see that there's smoke in the back. And I'm just going to recreate that using stock videos that you can find online. So to recreate this, what you're going to need is a couple plugins. And the plugins that I'm going to be showing you guys are completely free. And the effect was actually made by none other than Patrick Sterling, who is a really freaking talented DaVinci Resolve content creator and the plugin is called Proto V2. So I'm just gonna download it and you can see it's free. So now I'm gonna hit download and you can see that now it's installed. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into downloads. I'm gonna extract Proto V2 and then after you extract it, you're gonna wanna go into SSC Proto V2. I'm gonna go into this one instead, go to V2 and then you have this Lua source file right here. And then what you're gonna wanna do in DaVinci Resolve is drag down another fusion composition, maybe around four seconds long, just like that. And then I'm going to to import the Proto V2 plugin. So I'm gonna go into the file explorer and then I'm just gonna drag and drop it in there. And then it's gonna say installed. So please close and reopen DaVinci Resolve. And then after you do that, you're not gonna have to uh, do the weird drag and drop thing again because it's already gonna be in DaVinci Resolve. So I'm gonna go back in here, go back into the future composition and then search for Proto V2. Now in this part of the video, I'm just demonstrating how the Proto V2 effect works. The particular one is the one where it says Pro in here. So I dragged it down into the composition and then connect this into the media out and then connect this text node in here. This is a test and you can see that there's this nice glow on the edge of the text. And how hard was that? That's really not that hard at all. And this Proto V2 effect is actually similar to the After Effects effect that Mr. Who's the Boss uses on the outline on this text. And it's also similar to the outline that they use on some of these products by simply just masking around the product and applying the Proto V2 effect on there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna download some images off of the internet. So I'll Obviously, I'm going to download this image and the, this image. So it's kind of challenging to find. So I went ahead and found this PNG, which is not the same as this PNG, because this photo includes the front of the phone as well. But I'm just going to mask it out. And then iPhone 14 Pro Max PNG image. And I found this image right here. I'm just going to download it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this and start completely fresh. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to import all of these phone PNGs. And then I'm just going to stack these on top of each other. And there is a reason why I'm doing that and I'll get to that later. And then I'm going to download the smoke effect video off the internet. So this one looks good. So I'm just going to hit download. And you can tell by this video that they're also using a fractal noise effect in the back. You can tell by the pul pulsating in the back. So that's what I'm also going to try and recreate. So yeah. Yeah, let's go. So I'm just going to import all these assets here, just like this. And I'm just going to make sure that they're layered properly. So just like that. I'm going to make it five seconds long. Trim that in there. And then I'm just going to select all of this and then right click and then select a new fusion clip. So what this is going to do is this is going to basically just put all those clips into one fusion clip, which you can edit accordingly. So I'm just going to rename all these media end nodes. So I'm just going to hit rename and then rename it accordingly so and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this back a little bit add a transform node on both of these and then I'm gonna move the iPhone 14 Pro Max to this side and then move the ROG phone to this side just scale it down a little bit so that they're equal size and then what I'm gonna do is because this ROG phone image is not the image that I want because of this extra part here which I want to crop out what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a polygon node I'm not gonna connect it to here yet I'm just gonna draw a rough mask around the phone and then when it comes here, I'm just gonna do the mask like this. And now after you've drawn out your mask, you're gonna wanna connect it to the ROG phone. The next one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna recreate the background part. So you see that one side's green and the other side's red. I'm just gonna add a color correct to the smoke. 
and then I'm going to change this one to having a sort of reddish color and then I'm going to add a open effects glow effect and just connect it in there. I'm going to change a composite type to screen because I like glow that has composite type to set to screen instead of add and then turn up the spread a little bit, turn up the gain. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate this. So this is the red one, and this one's going to be the green one. So this is the red one, and it's going to go in here. This is the green one, and it's going to go in here. And I'm just going to move that there, connect that there. I'm going to move this back. I'm actually going to add a merge node to both of these. And I'm going to select the apply mode, and I'm going to set the apply mode to screen for both of them. And then I'm going to change it to foreground, because the apply mode only works if all this stuff is connected into the foreground. And then I'm going to connect this background node to both of these merge nodes, like that. And then make this alpha and then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna rename both of these smoke nodes here to red smoke and green smoke and then I'm gonna add a transform node on both of these I'm gonna click on this merge node select like the apply mode to screen I'm just gonna set the color character to green instead and then I'm gonna change the transform so I'm gonna set this to 180 degrees and I'm also gonna set this to 180 degrees and then I'm gonna select the transform 4 node and then I'm gonna hit flip so now there's red and green smoke on both sides and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shrink this down and then put them in the corners and then after that I'm actually going to drag down a polygon node draw a polygon mask on the red one first so I kind of just want the red one to just end off there I'm gonna connect this here to the third merge node and then turn up the soft edge and then I'm gonna do the same for the green one so I'm just gonna move this back one and then drag down a polygon node and then just draw the green smoke here just draw a rough mask around the smoke connect it to the merge so this is when I made my mistake I was actually supposed to plug a polygon Polygon node into the merge node that comes after the transform and as you can see by this video the polygon actually comes before the transform sorry about that so to recreate this uh, sort of fractal noise in the background what I'm gonna do is first I'm just going to make the background black and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a fast noise node here and connect it to the foreground and then I'm just gonna do control T and now the inputs have been swapped on the merge node. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another merge node. Set this from the background to the foreground. And then add a black background node. And instead of it being like that with a checkerboard pattern, it's now like this with no checkerboard pattern. Because in the original video, this isn't transparent. So yeah. And then I'm going to play with the fast noise. Because this looks way too bright. So I'm just going to turn up the detail a little bit. Turn down the brightness. And then I'm going to turn up the see the rate. So now it moves slightly. Turn the brightness down a bit more. Just like that. So I'm actually just gonna move this back a little bit along with this and now I'm gonna recreate the main part so first what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a little bit of the glow to the phones so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this down a little bit which then allows me to move this back and then I'm gonna switch up the proto v2 effect drag down this middle one right here the one that says pro and then now you can see that after I drag all these down you can see that there's now an outline on the phone so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this down like that move that away like that and now I'm just gonna duplicate this and then I'm going to merge it in here like that so now this is set to the background and I'm gonna set this to the foreground and now you can see that the iPhone has a bit of glow to it and then I'm gonna color correct this a little bit and then I just basically dialed in the settings until it looked good and then I just did the same with the phone on the other side of the screen and now you can see I have the ROG phone inside of this little glow thing here and I'm gonna change the color to a reddish color and then I'm gonna add a color correcting node which is this one right here and change the color to a little bit of a reddish color and then I'm gonna change the apply mode here to screen so that the dark parts of the phone is actually more transparent than the lighter parts of the phone which is a very similar effect that they did here and then I'm just gonna do the same with the iPhone so now the smoke is visible above the iPhone now that this part's done I'm gonna try and recreate this other part so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to recreate this versus part here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag down a Proto V2 effect on here, just like this. And then I'm going to change the source from ellipse to a text. Change the text controls. And I'm just going to make it a big V, like that. I'm going to change it to the correct font. Scale it down. Change the center. Set the C the rate to zero. And then change it to intensity controls. And I'm just going to make this a red font. So just the color red like that. Can make it a bit brighter just like that and then i'm going to copy and paste this put that in there like that and then change this to an s 
and then change it to intensity control to green and then change the center x value and now the v and the s are right beside each other and then the next thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to recreate this entire thing so this is basically all the categories that the video goes through so to do that i'm going to move the media out node even more and i'm going to add a background node and i'm just going to make the background node a white color and then i'm going to turn down the opacity of it to like maybe 0.2 and then i'm going to connect the rectangle node and then i'm just going to set it to the right size so now you can see that there's this background part and then what i'm going to do is recreate the white parts and also the other parts over here so i'm going to drag down another background node here and then i'm just going to make the gradient from top to bottom like before and then i'm going to pick the color pick screen color and then i'm going to pick the bottom of it and then this one i'm going to pick the top of it like that so now there's a very slight gradient in this thing here and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to drag down a rectangle node and then make it this really stretched out rectangle shape connected to the background and then i'm going to set the size and then i'm just going to try and get the dimensions to be correct just like this and then to recreate this triangle out shape i'm going to drag down another polygon node and i'm just going to draw it out like this and then connect it to the rectangle node and i'm not quite sure why resolve keeps ruining my masks again put the mask after the transform node and now you can see it's a triangle out and then i'm going to do the same on the other side so drag this down add a mirrors node and now you can see it's now symmetrical and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to drag this entire thing down one and i'm going to add a duplicate node drag that down there and then i'm going to make nine copies and then change the center i'm actually going to drag this up a little bit i'm going to add just one more node underneath here and that's going to be a shadow show shadow drop shadow and i'm going to change the drop angle Angle to around 90 degrees, change your drop distance to a pretty low value, change your blur value, change your blend to a lower value, and now you can see that I've recreated the shapes here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste this entire big thing here, do that, and then like that, move that closer, and then I'm going to redo the nodes. So I'm going to pick the screen color, and then pick the top of that dark thingy, and then pick screen color again, and then pick the bottom of that dark thingy, and then what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to disconnect this. I'm just going to draw a polygon mask just like this, which is basically just a parallelogram, and then I'm going to kind this to the background and then I connect that there. I'm gonna delete the mirrors one so that I can actually see all this stuff. Add a transform node in there. And I'm just gonna move it this way a little bit so that I can actually see these other ones. And you may notice that these are not aligned anymore. And I'm gonna change some things in duplicate node. And now I'm gonna take the transform node, shift it over like that. And then I'm gonna move this this way a little bit. I'm gonna add a mirrors node. Flip the mirrors. And now you can see that it's like that now. And now I recreated the dark parts and that's pretty dang cool. And now the next thing that I'm gonna recreate is all the text. So to recreate the text, just drag down a text node. And I'm just going to copy what it says here. And then I'm going to tune in the settings of the text. And I'm just going to do that for all the text layers here. And then I just made a text node for all nine parts of the video. And now you can see I recreated all the text right here. So these are all the text nodes and I basically just arranged them like this. And I basically just copy paste it and I changed what the text says and I moved it down and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, that's basically what I did for this whole por portion of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this this way in this direction a little bit. So now you may notice that halfway through this part here, this red thing actually shows up. And to do that, it's actually pretty simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy paste this just like that. And then I'm going to turn off the duplicate and I'm going to select this background node here. I'm going to select the type to solid color. I'm going to delete the mirrors node. And the reason why I deleted the mirrors node is because I only want this to be on one side of either one. And then if I want to switch sides, I can just hit the transform button and then just hit flip. And then I can move this to the correct position. And then I'm going to change the background color to red. And then above all these, and I'm just going to add a glow effect, this glow here, which basically gives it a little bit of an aura. And then what I'm going to do is animate the visibility of this merge node right here. So you can see that when I click on this merge node, when I set the blend to zero, it basically just disappears. And then when I set the blend to one, it reappears and you can animate it like that. So I'm about 120 frames in. I'm just going to add a keyframe and then at 130 I'm gonna add another keyframe and then I'm gonna go to the first keyframe and set the blend to zero so now after this point it's red and before this point it's black so now that I've recreated the actual graphic I'm now gonna try and recreate the in animation yay woohoo 
you can tell by the end animation that if I go to the next frame, it just pops in like that, and then the entire thing is zoomed in, and then this part slowly zooms out, the phones come in from the sides, and you can see that these things come in like that, and then it slowly zooms out over time, and you can see that there's no out animation. I, like, I can literally go to the frame with the graphic and the frame after the graphic, and you can see that there is absolutely no out animation. So let's do it, shall we? Let's go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this duplicate node right here, and I'm going to go to frame 40, put a keyframe on the number of copies, and then on frame 0, set the number of copies to 0. And now, they're just going to animate in just like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the output of this duplicate node, and then put it in the effect mask input of this merge node with all the text. And now, the text is going to fade in with this stuff here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use the ROG phone first. So I'm just going to move this entire thing down, drag a transform node in there, and then a keyframe on the center, go to frame 0. And I'm just going to slide the phone out just like that, around 0 0.2 on the X value. And then I'm going to do the same with the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I'm just going to slide it this way, and then add a transform node, add a keyframe on center, go to frame 0, and then move the center X until it says 0 0.8. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the spline of the animation to start fast and slow down just like this. And I'm going to do the same with the other one. And I'm also going to add that sweet motion blur. Boom. And then I copy pasted this duplicate node, put it here. And then I tweaked this duplicate node to match the other duplicate node. And this is the finished product. So I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. If you loved it, please subscribe. And I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Bye! So, by the time I was done filming that video, I actually put this project on hold for like a whole two weeks because I just wasn't proud with the end result. I thought that the end result would be a lot better than my actual end result. Then the problem is that the in animation actually wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. If you look closely, you may notice that all of the white things go from top to bottom and they just expand at the same exact time rather than all of them being delayed and opening up one by one, like the original. And as a perfectionist, that is really annoying. So I spent the past couple of weeks trying to research how to do it better than what I did. So I just recently learned about using follower modifiers in text plus nodes. And basically what follower modifiers do is it basically allows you to take text and then animate the text one by one. So after a lot of trial and error and watching lots of tutorial videos, I managed to get to this point. And, and I think that this animation looks a lot better than the in animation in the original one that I did. Now, after I was done filming, I did notice that there was a delay slider in the duplicate node, but I tried playing around with that and it didn't really work, and I did a ton of research to try and get it to work. But if any of you in the comments could tell me, like, a better way to do the animation more effectively, then that would greatly be appreciated, but, uh, yeah, let's move on with the video. Bye!